Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So Bitcoin holders, crypto holders, I'm here to say don't fall for the whale games. We knew this was coming. We knew that it was going to happen. So don't fall for it. I'm hearing more, more panic today, or at least from some people. Most people in this chat are not. But I am sensing more of it. So today I'm going to show you why you should not fall for the whale games the whales that are trying to take your financial freedom from you the ones that are trying to prevent you from achieving life-changing wealth so thanks for tuning in as always smash up the like subscribe to the channel two streams almost every day 11 30 and 8 30 p.m central standard time make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on twitter facebook instagram and check out all the latest news articles and guides at CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm feeling good. I don't know. I'm hearing other people are feeling very down. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. They must have been playing with leverage or something. I, I, I don't know why anyone would just all of a sudden get really, really bearish because of today. When in fact, it's, Bitcoin's down 2%. So it's not like we had a 20% drop. It's not like we had a major disaster. Um, and... Right now, as I'm streaming, we are still holding above this 41,000 line, which has been a pretty good support as of late, although Bitcoin broke through a couple of times, but you still, overall, it's held. No reason to think it won't. But regardless, what we're seeing right now is perfectly or orchestrated whale games, okay? And for those of you guys that aren't aware, whales are just players within the crypto ecosystem that have a whole bunch of bitcoin just more than you and more than possibly me and the ones that are just affecting they're, they're causing fud they're causing doubt they're causing you to to sell your bitcoin this is why they're preventing you from achieving financial freedom if if you fall for it if you fall for it so what's going on today well the biggest thing i saw a couple things Number one, I saw this Bitcoin and gold under pressure as the dollar tracks U.S. Treasury yields go higher. So whatever the, the U.S. Treasury bond goes higher, there's higher interest. It does seem to have some effect on Bitcoin and now even gold. But, you know, that that is something that that happens. It comes and goes. And uh, and I don't really think that's it. I do think it has a lot to do with us being in September, being in the final week of September, and I've shown you guys this time and time and time again, why that is important, all right? Right now, you can see extreme fear level at 25, right? So there is some panic. There is some fear. So the whales are doing a pretty good job, pretty good job at the newbies, at the, at the, the, the retail investors that that have just come aboard but i know you watching me right now those of you guys that's in the stream you're not falling for it you've seen this before we've seen much much worse let's not forget that bitcoin was just at twenty-eight thousand like a month ago okay or maybe two months ago i should say two months ago but let's not forget even this year we've seen much worse and let's not forget what happened in 2020 how much worse it was back then so to, to be at extreme level, extreme fear right now just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But let me show you why I think there's a lot of whale games going on. So I saw this this morning. This was posted. So total transfer volume has increased dramatically within the last month or so. Now, keep in mind, this is just transfer volume. This is just transfers from one exchange to another, to another, to another. It doesn't mean a whole lot other than the volume transfers have increased. That's pretty much it. But here's the thing, though. Then you have to look at something like this. Okay, so this is measuring what the whales, okay, in terms of how much they hold, what they're actually doing. And this is eye-opening. So it's a little bit harder for you guys to see, but you can see this, this brown line right here. This is believe it or not, whales that hold between 1 to 10 million in Bitcoin, okay? And you could see how recently it jumped up to the moon. So the very, like, 
some of the, the biggest whales out there have just accumulated all this Bitcoin. And not only that, you can see the purple line also jumped up in a big way too. And that's between 100,000 and 1 million. Surprisingly enough, that did have a drastic drop before, but now it's coming right back up. So you could see how the biggest whales out there, and I take that back, it's not the biggest whales. Biggest whales are like Michael Strategy and those guys. And they're not selling, we know that. But yeah, some of the some of the, the biggest whales within our ecosystem that's within, you know, let's say 10 million or under, they're accumulating as much as possible. And these are the guys that are trying to steal your financial freedom from you because they do have enough when you add in leverage they do have enough to move markets okay and when they do they cause a lot of newbies and not retail investors to just to just sell and that's what happens so anytime stuff like this happens right there's a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt people are like oh why are we not at 50,000 why do we come back to 41 ah is it a longer bear trend am i should i sell you know that doubt just just start swirling around especially when you hear other people start getting bearish too but i'm not bearish i'm not bearish i'm nowhere close to being bearish and you know i explained last night i was feeling it so i created this video why i remain bullish on bitcoin so if you do need a reminder you do need to know why i really <laughs> do not feel bearish at all and why i do believe that Bitcoin will continue on and will have greener pastures starting in October, November, December. Yes, I do think that's coming. So for those of you guys that are truly panicking, which I don't think you are, but if you are truly panicking, then watch that video from last night. I think that'll give you a really good idea why I'm not panicking and why I'm not fearful at this point. Now, I did mention about I did mention about September, so I'm just going to bring that up again. That I think it's very important that people realize this. Oh, where did I have it? Did I close it? No, here we go. I think this is also important that September is just a bad month for Bitcoin. Going back all the way to 2013, you could see that 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2014, 2013 all red months so september has always been a bad month for bitcoin so that is the case and we happen to be in september still we still have a few more days but look at what's coming afterwards right october november december also traditionally are very positive months and i like to remind you guys that we are in the last year of a four-year cycle we are in the year after the halving event which occurred in 2020 and that happens to be the most bullish bullish time right in the last three months have been the most bullish quarter of of a bull run so there is that to look forward to right and of course everything else that's going on that i've covered about adoption and and a whole lot of institutional buying and a whole lot of other things right but this is also coming up so i do think this has a lot to do with it that we are in september so this is kind of to be expected that we will have some red right but let's see what happens october november december all right so there's that now what else is going on today well there's a few other things that i think it's very positive well take a look at this this also shows not only not not only not well i should say not only let, let me step it back not all retail investors are panicking now i may have presented the situation where like all retail investors are panicking no i know a lot of you guys watching me are not panicking but this also shows you that yeah a lot of other retail investors they're not panicking. In fact, they're doing the right thing. They're accumulating. So this shows people, entities, holding less than 10 Bitcoin. And it has been increasing dramatically recently, despite the fact that the price has not gone up astronomically. So in 2017, you could see that there's a circle in the middle, shows the number of entities holding less than 10 Bitcoins going up to the moon. You could see it in 2013, 2014. But you could see it right now in 2021, despite the fact that price has not gone up so that's a very good indication that retail investors are getting smarter 
they realize this is the future and they don't want to give up on it and they're stocking up. So this is also pretty darn positive. What else is there? Facebook. Facebook is spending $50 million to develop some kind of new metaverse project. Facebook's been getting a lot of heat recently. Studies showing that people that use Facebook is actually getting more depressed than anything. And uh, especially among teenage girls. And with Instagram too. So it seems like they're trying to do some PR uh, or damage control. So they're coming out with some kind of metaverse which could relate to crypto or could relate to their new Dem stablecoin. I, I don't know, but they are making a big push onto it. So just to throw that out there, obviously uh, a lot of people are not fans of Facebook. Not a lot of people are fans of Mark, but still for one of the big tech giants to get into crypto fully, you can't deny the fact that that is bringing a lot of adoption awareness and a lot of people into crypto. So Overall, I think that's going to be a good thing if it does come true. Um, for those of you guys that are Stellar fans, Peruvian stablecoin launches. So that's one of the new initiatives for Stellar. Some of you guys always ask me, what's going on with Stellar? I'm like, I don't know. Well, this may be the one of the directions they want to become a blockchain for, for stablecoins. So I've heard about this in the past. And also, uh, what else is there? Luna is having their new upgrade very soon. You guys know that I do like Luna and Terra, and there's some big things coming for it. So that is coming right around the corner. And lastly, I want to cover this because it seems like Bitfinex or someone within Bitfinex just made a huge error and spent about $24 million in fees to make a single transaction. That single transaction was to a non-custodial exchange called Diversify. And it seems like that was a mistake because they were just trying to pay. They were trying to send $100,000. And you know what? Uh, it seems like the miner that collected the fees in, in error decided to return most of that back. So it kind of shows you the community is looking out for each other. That's a lot of money. Imagine if you were this miner and you were given basically $22 million in uh in, in fees and then you gave it back so yeah that's pretty that's pretty good that's pretty good i don't know if i would do that no, i'm just kidding i would <laughs> all right uh there you go outside of that you know today is just one of those days good buying opportunity there's a lot of good buying opportunity there's a lot of red today although you know not not really not really i know yeah there's three to five percent but you could see you know like Binance coin XRP down barely one to two percent. Doge barely down. Uniswap, you know, DeFi plays are still up, right? So today is one of those days. I know they're looking at this. There's a lot of people that's fearful. I don't know why. I mean, we're we're at the same point basically we were like a few weeks ago. Um, I think people are antsy now more than anything. Why Bitcoin is not going up yet after expirations? Aren't we supposed to have no pressure? Everything is going to go up. Now, I told you guys, I think there's one more week left, right? The whales could do whatever they can during this week to try to scare people out. And then I think we're going to have fantastic times afterwards. So hang in there, hang in there. Now, I did see someone else and say, George, what if you are absolutely wrong? What's your backup plan, right? What if this is the start at the end? Well, I told you guys this. I made sure that I have cash on the side. I said about... 25%, 25 to 30%. It's a contingency for these kind of things. And I plan on holding that indefinitely. And here's why. Because if we do have whale-driven FUD, media-driven FUD, we have some kind of event that we can't predict, um, and we do have a major correction or major dip, generally speaking, we come up from those dips very fast. But if you're able to take advantage that's how you prosper. You buy low, right? So that's why I made sure that this time around, I, I put a set, I put on the side a good amount of cash. And I plan on doing so even in the opposite direction. I told you guys, once Bitcoin breaks above 60 and goes to 70, 80, 90, 20, 100, uh, 90 doesn't go back to 20. I don't know why I said that. But <laughs> when it's going up, I plan on taking 10% off the top for the same reasons. I know eventually we're going to have another major correction, right? 
whether we have a blow off top or not, if we have a blow off top, we're going to have a major correction. If we don't and we have a slow setting climb, we're still going to have some kind of correction at some point. But I know Bitcoin is the future. It's not going to go away. Just look at where it is now. Okay, we're not back to $3,000. We're not back to $10,000. We're sitting at $40,000. Okay, so Bitcoin's adoption is undeniable. It is going to go forward. That's why I'm going to stick with Bitcoin and stick with the altcoins that I truly believe have tremendous future, right? So I'm going to stick with them no matter what. But that's my contingency is to make sure I have cash on the side to be able to buy the dips. Otherwise, just holding, just holding. All right, um, let's do some Q&A. Have you thought about doing an interview with Michael Saylor? I've asked him. I asked his representative. He does not seem like he wants to do it. I don't know why. Maybe I questioned him on a few things he didn't like, but I mean, overall, I would love to get Michael Saylor on. So yes, I have asked before. All right, <laughs> scrolling up. Yeah, so I just answered that question from Prince Cell. Uh, is Facebook still around? Yes. In fact, it's a trillion dollar company now. So they have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The only social media platform that competes with them that they haven't bought or there's two. I mean, Twitter, but Twitter doesn't seem to be gaining on them and TikTok, which does seem to get, be gaining on them. But still, Facebook owns everything. So they're not going to go away anytime soon. Um Hellcat says, stop looking at a one hour or five minute or 15 minute chart and relax. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Ken says, I bought more today. Congratulations. Uh, what else is there? Why, why is September different to October? You know, it's just one of those market conditions kind of thing. Traditionally, markets, the overall stock market is weaker in September. That's why uh, Bitcoin is weaker in September. And also, it could be because the last three months traditionally is very good. So it's a good break, a great, you know, breathing period. So, yeah. Um, Marshawn, of course, thank you. Uh, John says, we need to decouple from a stock market. The bigger crypto gets, the more it will decouple. Right now, not so much. Not so much. But keep in mind, it's really hard to decouple from a stock market. It's, de it's hard to decouple from fear. When there's a disaster that happens in the stock market, even gold gets sold off. And gold's market cap is 10 times bigger than Bitcoin. More than 10 times. So think about it. If gold could be affected by the stock market, then Bitcoin will too. But the correlation, right, will decrease as Bitcoin's market cap gets bigger. And same thing with all these altcoins. But it's hard to do so because you're really trying to ask people to decouple from fear. And, you know, for most people, when there's fear, the number one thing to do is sell. Doesn't matter what logic says. Number one thing is to sell. That's where you got to retrain your brain. All the richest people on earth, all the famous investors that you could think of, they all retrain their brain to realize that when things are fearful, when times are fearful, when people are panic selling, especially the good projects, that's when you pick up. You pick up low. You make your money when you pick up low and then you carry it through to highs and then you can take profits on the way up. But that's how you do it. Every single rich person, doesn't matter if they're a stock investor or a real estate developer or investor or crypto investor, you know, they all follow the same strategy. Basically, be patient, not to panic sell and take advantage of the dips when you can. And that's what I'm what I'm doing. Um, Terra Virtua, it's an NFT project. I, I like them. They, they, they moved around a couple chains, but they do have licensing with a couple big movie producers. And they also got into comic books too. So Uh, 
2 k where'd I put it? Hey, there's a lot of bargains today. A lot of bargains. All right, I finally caught up to the comments now. I just, I was looking at what was said before. All right, Tyler, welcome. Welcome to the channel and being a member. Um, yeah, Football Spain agrees. Robert Kiyosaki is a salesman. You know, someone asked me that yesterday. Like, what do you think about what Robert said about this this tremendous doomsday crash, right? He's going to get a one. I, first of all, I respect the guy a lot. I, I do enjoy his books. Um, and I do think he's a big Bitcoin advocate. Yes, I, I do respect him from that aspect. But he's been spreading a lot of fear. He's like a fear monger. He's a FUD spreader. And uh, if you look at his tweets, it's nonstop every month going back. And people have correlated how, how like years where he's been saying... You know, all this stuff, right? So eventually it's going to come true. And, and then eventually he's going to take credit for it. But in the meantime, I feel like he's just spreading so much fear right now. <clears throat> uh, so I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Um, hold on. If the dip goes to October, will bull extend till January? Sure. You know, history tends to rhyme. I mean, history doesn't repeat, but tends to rhyme. But it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So it doesn't mean exactly on the dot, December 31st of 2021 is when things start going on. Now, I mean, it could be off a few weeks, a month. It doesn't matter. But we could definitely continue on into 2022. If we don't have that blow-off top event, we just slowly study going upwards. It could keep going. And we just, we just move into the next four-year cycle like nothing's happened. That could be a possibility, too. Uh, Hawken, I don't have opinion on that project. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to repeat that, but that's quite funny. Uh, what happened to Zilliqa? Nothing happened to Zilliqa. They're still hanging around. They still have a lot of development. They're really into NFTs now. I mean, they, they've been around since 2017, 2018, kind of stuck around. Doesn't have the same momentum as some of the bigger boys, but they're still up there. Multi-billion dollars. Um, who do you use for tax reporting? Have you heard anything about tax bit? Not tax bit. Uh, shoot. It's been a while. I forgot. There's, there's a couple of companies that does tax reporting. Well, they'll accumulate all your trades. And then you you imp, you give it to accountant or put it into TurboTax or whatever. But I forgot what. Oh, Coinly, I think. I think they use Coinly. All right. Um, Harmony, I do like. I I've been supportive of, of uh, Harmony for quite some time. Is there EVM compatible chain based in the U.S. A lot of traction. So I like them. Uh. Uh, bro, I looked at most of the partnerships on B Pro and looks iffy, like they only have a hundred followers. No, that's not true. Help, yeah. you're making that up about follower Twitter followers. Uh, you know, keep in mind, B Pro is not their B Pro is a company that creates code base, okay, and others rent it basically or or subscribe to it. So that's how it works. So it's not like they're creating like things on their own. They're not creating dApps on their own. They create the code base for others to use. For example, Real Fever, which is one that's like NBA top shots of um, football. They use BPro's NFT marketplace code base. So it's not like a traditional partnership. It's just these guys are using the code base. They're not dApps on top of their chain. That's different. So just keep that in mind, Hellcat. Kava, I don't know what's going on with Kava anymore. I, I actually saw Kava just announced like $100 million 
um, you know, one of those incentive programs to uh, incentivize people to come on Kava. But Kava is weird. They're built within Cosmos ecosystem. You know, they could have been a gigantic DeFi play for Cosmos, but it seems like they want to differentiate themselves and kind of make their own thing, right? I think they should follow the footsteps of Terra and everyone else. Let's go open up IBC and just just make all the coins within uh, Cosmos ecosystem, talk to each other, and Kava could certainly do that. They're cross-chain already. So I don't know. Their, their, their direction is just a little weird. But I, I've covered them in the past. They were a partner for a little bit. Um, JT, appreciate it. Welcome. Corey, I wish that was true, but no. Not enough <laughs> on my end. Uh, did you read about electric, the electric company that is mining when they have excess power? No, I did not. Makes sense. It makes sense. Any kind of like, if you're in any area with a lot of excess, you know, energy, like if you're by a waterfall or something like that, I'm sure you can harness that and mine Bitcoin with it. Any excitement over to Zill, Yeath Bridge this Thursday and 50% APY? Not really, but okay. That could be big for them. There's a lot of bridges being built recently with Ethereum, right? So it's good for them. It's good for them. Chaz, I, I can't really comment on his sources and his timelines, but I will say even my my own sources, which is just me, myself, and I, 60% of the time, it's right every time. So think about that. No one is going to be perfect. No one is is no one has a, a, a magic eight ball telling them what's exactly going to happen. But you know what we do is put, at least what I do, is put two and two together and look at what's really going on, right? Looking past the whale games, which I've sat through so many of. I mean, I can't tell you how much of these kind of periods I've been through over the last four years. No, probably seven years. So I've seen them. And I prepare myself. And I'm not going to fall for the same games. So just kind of sharing with you guys what I see and what I've gone through before. Um... Uh, check out the graph we just dropped as a comment on your Twitter post. If someone is bearish, this will change into bullish. I'll take a look at it and I'll retweet it if that's really the case. All right, last few questions. Anything else? Anything else? The hamster time traveler is always right. <laughs> Whale games versus squid games. I don't even know what that means. Who's a squid? Uh, I, I don't know what that means. But anyways... All right, guys, uh, you know what? To conclude, you got to stay strong. You got to look past the FUD. You got to look past the whale games. I know most of you guys tune in. You're, you're accustomed to this, okay? You know what's going on. But for those of you guys that are new to the channel, new to crypto, you got to realize that the whales do this because they want to accumulate more. They want you to not attain your goal of reaching financial freedom. They want that money for themselves. They want you to transfer your wealth to them. So don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Smash a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. Take